gotta stay home now every day. Can't even go to the park and play what well, I'm inside out. And you can hear me shout what I'd love to see, but you gotta stay away. <laughs> How's it, everyone? Uh, this is Mr. Pat from the Windward Boys and Girls Club reaching out to you. Uh, it's a tough time for everybody. I don't have to say that to you. We're staying at home. We're taking care of ourselves and taking care of others by doing that. And the club wants to reach out to you and provide you with some, first of all, to let you know we're thinking about you. We're doing this stuff for you. And we hope that it, it benefits you, gives you something to learn and have fun with. Um, I'm going to be making, you know, I run, I'm a math teacher and I run the Power Hour. So I'm going to be kind of making a mixed bag of stuff, uh, a little bit of music every day, every lesson, and then some math every lesson, maybe some other subjects too. Um, so try to keep it live keep it interesting for you and give you the chance to learn something at the same time. So that was a blues shuffle uh, in the key of G. And I'll have lessons later where I teach you about the one, four, five chords, G, C, and D that go together. How to play the harmonica a little bit, which harmonica to choose, that kind of stuff. That'll be in future lessons. Today I just wanted to send a shout out to you musically before I get into the math part of it. Okay, again, this is Mr. Pat from the Windward Boys and Girls Club on the island of Oahu, reaching out to all of you. Okay, so we're going to shift gears. I'm going to put the harmonica away, or the blues harp away, and I'm going to talk about math a little bit. So, uh, you guys in 7th and 8th grade are doing pre-algebra, algebra things. That's going to be my focus, but I want to do a couple lessons that are just about general enrichment and meaningful things. This first one especially, words you've heard a lot of, I'm going to talk about two types of functions or equations that are in the news a lot and I want to give you a less scary heads up on how how they apply and when you hear the words what it really means. So what we're going to be talking about today is um, linear functions and exponential functions. Don't go to sleep. Don't, no, no, don't get all crazy here. So linear stuff is what you're used to. Uh, when your teacher talks to you about y equals mx plus b, that kind of thing, when you're finding the slope, the intercepts, that's a linear straight line function. Uh, the fourth quarter in eighth grade, especially algebra, would have a lot of these quadratic functions that are curved lines. They're not straight lines. The slope is different. Everything's different. Um, we'll get into that later. But today we're going to directly compare a linear function with an exponential function. Okay, the situation we're going to use is earning money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to create a graph on this whiteboard here. No tech, no sm smart board here, but I got this. And we're going to see what the different graphs look like and try to give you a little bit of understanding what people are talking about when they use those terms. So we're going to start with linear, but let me reposition this and pick up my graph over here. Make sure you can see it. That looks good. Hours worked on the bottom. Money made. So here's the situations we're talking about. The linear representation is the one you're most used to. You found the slope, the rate of change. It's a constant one, always goes up or down the same way. So that's going to happen on this first graph if we do it right. So the situation involves making money. So for the linear function, we're just making a flat $10 per hour. We're going to work eight hours and we're going to track how much money we will make over that eight hour period if we're being paid $10 an hour. 
which is like a minimum wage kind of thing, but that's kind of where a lot of people are starting out at. So it applies to today's world. So I got this graph set up here. You can see the x-axis is, <clears throat> excuse me, listing each hour that you work, and the y-axis is a way to track the money that you're making. Notice it's not a t-chart, it's just over here because these numbers are all positive. And if you remember your quadrants from graphing, the quadrant one is where both X and Y are positive. So that's what we're working in. That allows me to make a bigger graph so it's easier for you to see what's happening. Okay. So $10 an hour, eight hours of work. Let's plot this and see what happens. Okay. Here we go. So first hour. I have worked an hour and I'm happy to say I have made 10 bucks because it's $10 an hour. So I come over to one, I go up to 10 and I make my first dot. These are 10, 20, 30, 40 numbers are small. I don't know if you can see that. If I work two hours, two times 10, I picked easy numbers, that's 20. So for two, I come over and I see 20 over here. And that's gonna continue. For three, I go to 30. Let me rearrange my two and get a little bit. Four times 10 is 40. Five times 10 is 50. Six times 10 is 60. Seven times 10, you know. And lastly, I finished my eight hour shift. I'm starving. I want to go home and take a shower and rest. I want to go beach, but I can't because it's, what? It's stay at home unless you're an essential worker. You happen to be one, so you got to go to work today. Okay, now we're going to connect that with a graph. Now notice that created a straight line. So that's a linear function. So the slope is every one you go over, you go up 10. Okay? If you hadn't worked at all, you wouldn't have made any money. So the y-intercept is actually zero here because that's where you started. But since you did go to work, you made 80 bucks for your eight hours time. Okay, so good on you. That's a linear function. Y equals MX plus B. The M is the slope or the rate it changes. And that's constant. It's the same amount of change no matter what. If you work two more hours, you'd make 20 more dollars. 10 and 10, right? So that's one you're used to. Okay. The next one is different. The next one, the first hour you make $2 an hour. The second hour you double that and you make four. The third hour you double that four and you make eight. It doesn't sound fair because you already would have made $30 here. The fourth hour you would double eight and get 16 and so on and so forth. And the catch is this one. You don't get to add all those things up. Your pay is only whatever the eighth hour would come out to be. So think about that. First two, then four, then eight. Double that. Double that, and whatever your last number at, at eighth hour is, that's your whole pay for the day. Now, which one, without doing the math, think which one makes most sense to you? Give you 30 seconds to just put that in your brain, wash it around. Would you pick the 80 bucks, or would you pick take a chance and do this? Hard to say. Okay, 
That's one way to find out is graph it. So it's gonna be a little harder because I don't have all those convenient little numbers. I gotta estimate a little bit on this. But again, you're starting at zero. Okay. And when you work one hour, don't forget that was only two bucks. So somewhere right around in here, two dollars. Okay, I'm not gonna connect this just yet. In two hours, I doubled that too, so it went to four. So nah, somewhere right around there. Three hours, the four went up to eight. So I'm almost there at the 10, not quite. Looks like a linear one, don't it? Yeah, we'll see. At three hours, I had made $8. At four hours, two times eight, 16. These guys have made 40. I will have made 16, somewhere around there. So take a second, 16. You, now you're going to double it, so you can either add 16 plus 16 or multiply it times 2. I'll give you guys a chance. Sixteen plus sixteen is the ten and the six on each. So twenty plus twelve is thirty-two. Okay, so that goes up to here. Oh, it's starting to curve a little bit. So it looks like it's kind of curving if I'm making my dots in the right place. Okay, so at five hours, so two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Okay, that's sweet. And then the 32, I'm going to double. So my sixth hour, I'm going to take that $32 and double it. And that should be easy because it's 30 and 2. So double the 30 is 60. Double the 2 is 4. So at six hours, we're up at 64. And then, whoa, suddenly we're running over this line. 64 for the seventh hour doubles. And take a minute for that. 64, the four doubles to eight. And the 60 and 60 is 120. So all of a sudden I'm up, here's 150, here's 100. All of a sudden at the seventh hour, I'm up here. So you can kind of start seeing what's happening here. And the last one of our eight hour shift, this is our actual payday thing. You take that 128 and you double it. Okay, so we had two, four, eight, 16 times two is 32 times two is 64, times two is 128. 128 times two, you might need a calculator for that. So two times eight is 16, two times 20 is 40, that's... Okay, so what do you end up with? Okay, 256. So if you do this right, on the eighth hour, you gotta go all the way up here to 250 and then even a little more. So you're up here. Two fifty six. That's your final pay. So if you connect this, you guys can't see up there, wow. This a little bit. So if you connect this, you can start seeing what's going to happen. It is not a straight line at all. It's a curve line that shoots up. 
Okay, I know I didn't draw that particularly well, but you get the message. This goes up. 2 times 256 is almost at 500. So if these guys work another hour, they made 20 more dollars. You would be up at 500. These guys work two more hours, they would make a total of 100 bucks. You would be up at 1,000. So ladies and gentlemen, this orange line is called an exponential function. It goes up unbelievably quickly. It's what you've been seeing in the news if you're paying attention to all this stuff we're having to experience together. It's why the leaders of the medical community and everybody are um, very concerned and it's why it's so important to social distance and try to do our best to keep that from happening. What they want to do is they're trying to make this crazy looking line because that's where this stuff was headed at the beginning and they're trying to flatten it down to a more linear thing. The stuff is not good. You know, it is being doing bad stuff, but we're we're winning the war against it, it appears. We are starting to flatten it a little bit. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take you, me, and everybody to do our part. Not, you know, don't want to scare you. I just want to show you the importance of it. You know, and math doesn't lie. So they were talking about exponentially at first. Now they're refining that a little bit. So we need to keep staying the course and doing our part um, to make sure that happens. So that's it. That's our first math lesson. I'm not going to do any more with math today. Linear is straight. That's what you're used to. Um, you'll be doing these things called parabolas in eighth grade. It's like half of one of these exponents. They're also very interesting. I'll show you the logistics and all that in lessons coming up. Okay. That was super fun. This is the first one. Um, I think I'm going to uh, upload these to YouTube, Mr. Kent's or Mr. Pat's bag of tricks. We'll see what happens. T will let you know. And I want to thank you. I'm going to end with a little more harmonica because music keeps the soul together. Okay. Wish you all could be here playing music with me. I sincerely do, and I can't wait till it comes back and we get to do that more. Miss our music time. Okay, ready. Went out walking just to get some air. Wind felt good blowing through my hair. Well, I'm inside out. Hear me shout. You can't come over, but that's because I care. I can't come over, you know I really care. I love to see you, but I can't because I really care. All right. Aloha. Thank you.